Legend has it that in 1882 a settler came to the western slope of Colorado's Rocky Mountains and built a log cabin along Parachute Creek. He finished the cabin off with a fireplace and chimney made from the abundant rocks he found on nearby hills. But when he lit a fire, his housewarming suddenly took on new meaning. The chimney rocks burst into flames engulfing the entire house. That's because that settler discovered too late that the Peons Basin where he'd built his cabin was full of flammable rocks called oil shale. In the decades to follow, this rock would become the center of a major debate between landowners, oil companies, environmentalists, and the government. You wouldn't think that you'd be able to get oil out of a solid rock like this, but this is the upper hundred feet of the Green River oil shale, and when heated to high temperatures, this expels a beautiful hydrocarbon. As a historian, I have uh, read as much as I care to read or studied as much as I care to study about people acting in haste. I really don't need any more of that. <laughs> Patty Limerick is the director of the University of Colorado at Boulder Center of the American West. The center has created a web-based report titled What Every Westerner Should Know About Oil Shale to serve as a resource for bringing order to the oil shale debate. After two booms and busts, it looks like another oil shale development cycle is on the horizon. It's prospect local residents, policymakers, and concerned citizens throughout the country regard with a mix of anticipation and apprehension. It was great for me to look at a situation where there is such a process of deliberation going on. The report details the first two oil shale booms in Colorado where the world's largest supplies of the substance lay trapped beneath the surface of these mountains and mesas and the reasons those efforts ultimately failed. Though the center takes no position either for or against oil shale production, Limerick is quick to point out that almost every human enterprise is met with adversity at first and that the day could come when oil shale is flowing out of Colorado by the barrel load. There are unknowns, there are uncertainties, there's no, certainly no guarantee that this will work. The failure is not predictable either. It's, it seems there is a remarkable record of human ingenuity powering past obstacles and figuring, figuring things out. One man in favor of oil shale production is Tracy Boyd, communication and sustainability manager for Shell on unconventional oil. Oil shale is a, is a uh, pretty important resource for our nation's future energy security because it's very abundant and it's located here in the U.S. Since the 1980s, Shell has invested in oil shale research. North of Rifle, Colorado is Shell's Mahogany Research Project, a test site where they have developed an innovative process to extract oil from shale called in situ, or in place. Instead of mining the shale and processing it above ground, the shale is heated underground, essentially melting oil out of the rock. This is one of our electric heater wells. The uh, heater element goes down into the oil shale about 700 feet at this location. The heat from the heater gradually moves out into the oil shale and converts the kerogen into a light hydrocarbon. It then moves to the production well. You can see the donkey pump gets pumped to the separation and pumping station over there. There are a lot of other energy you know, options also needed in the future and, and frankly what we need is all of the above. We need everything to be developed because uh, our nation's demand far exceeds our supply. Boyd says full-scale oil shale development is years away, but he says continued research and development is key. Given the demand and the increasing demand for liquid fuels, we need some form of domestic liquid fuels that will help bridge the gap until renewables and alternates become more of a substantial part of the national energy picture. Although many challenges stand in the way of oil shale becoming a major fuel source, one is too big to ignore. Water is the number one environmental issue related to oil shale development in the U.S. The, the dated studies and the current studies and research all indicate that on average about a three to one ratio or three barrels of water per barrel of oil produced is what is anticipated to be, uh, I say, used for planning purposes for shale. Oil shale will require tremendous amount of water. Karen uh, Sheldon presence, is the executive you know, director we of Western Resource Advocates, a nonprofit environmental law and policy organization headquartered in Boulder. The group tracks water rights held by oil companies in Colorado. 
Sheldon says the burden that oil shale production would put on the state would be devastating. The expectation from the Bureau of Land Management is some 378,000 acre feet of water per year for a commercial level of oil shale operation. Now to put that in some context, the Denver metro area, which has about 1.4 million citizens in it, uses 275,000 acre feet of water every year. Water will be a primary constraint on oil shale production. If we go ahead with commercial oil shale, given the limited quantities of water in Colorado, there will be many things that we will not be able to do. We will have to trade off, for example, agriculture uh, with oil shale. Everyone may not agree about oil shale development, but this report is getting all sides talking. It's a very well balanced, well, very well done, comprehensive report, and it has a particularly excellent uh, historical review of oil shale. It's an important document for, for public education and to help inform the, the debate that we all need to have about oil shale. It's just really a wonderful thing to see a society thinking, no, we need to really think before we, before we move. To read the report, What Every Westerner Should Know About Oil Shale, go to oilshale.centerwest.org.